Hello. So this was going to be a different video, a little bit more about like kicking around strings, um, copying strings and opening up files and stuff like that. But I thought, you know what? It already took me long enough to hash this part out that I'm about to show you. So I just wanted to knock that out in what I would call a little video, but I imagine it will go for like 20 or 30 minutes. Anyway, it's going to be sort of a taste of macros since it's the Microsoft macro assembler we're talking about and also uh, dealing with Unicode strings in a way that's not completely ridiculous by using those macros. So I'm going to get straight to it. Punch in the typical header fodder up here at the top. This is 99.99% .99 of programs are, that are 32-bit are going to look exactly like this. So this is going to be model flat, standard call, and then option without the dot, case map none. And then we're going to include lib in the, I am happen to be using the MASM32 variant of MASM um, for the most part, but really I'm using MASM 8.0, so it's actually a ML file from a newer ASM. But anyway, um, you don't have to pit the, this MASM 32 path if you're using like the 2019 SDK or the 2010 SDK or something in this century or whatever from Windows, and you're foregoing the use of the MASM 32 package. So just to let you know that's only needed if this whole path thing is needed for only that but you will need kernel 32.lib so basically that part you don't need unless you're specifically using MASM32 all right and no matter what we're going to need exit process and this is a prototype for it and it will take one d word which is an exit code you could optional optionally put like a label here to remind you of what that D word is if you want. I'm just going to keep it simple and you can name them whatever you want, you know, anything that just hints to you what's going on. And then we'll come down and we'll do the data and we'll just punch in a good old fashioned string. And I'll call this one string ANSI because it's uh it's going to be the the narrow string right so it's going to, we can either say define byte which is pretty typical or you can actually even say words so i'm since i don't usually do it that way i'm going to do it this way this time and we can also use single quotes instead of double quotes in masm and it doesn't have to refer to just a character the single quotes are virtually exactly the same thing as double quotes so we can say this is a narrow ANSI ASCII string like that and then we'll terminate it with a zero which makes it a null string, a C string which just in case you haven't been caught up with the other videos um, like in C programming and a lot of other languages they'll tack on that little null zero for you and you just kind of never really know it's there but in uh, machine language we need to specifically make sure that that's there and also we can do a 1310 which is the same as 0d or odoa on a in hexadecimal which is a carriage return and a line feed which is the windows way of doing a new line right in unix like operating systems it would just be this new line this 10 the uh, line feed all right so now that we have that we can Get our code section rocking, give it some label, and then end that label so that it doesn't get mad at us. And then in here we can just push a zero, which is just like return zero because we're going to call exit process. And basically that's it. So let's see if this runs. I'm going to hit F5. Oh, I need to save it as a string prog.asm. All right, we got a problem here. It says syntax error, exit process. Okay. So exit process 
What am I doing wrong? Prototype, it has a push Z. Oh, I forgot to put call in front of it. Okay, constant value too large. That's because I called this a word. It's supposed to be a byte. Or define byte, because that's an ANSI string, right? It's a series of 8-bit characters. Getting a little ahead of myself. So this is an okay error right here. This um this thing that just basically means it didn't compile right last time, so it doesn't have the object file, so we can ignore that. And otherwise I don't see any other errors, and I'll just to prove it, I'll run it again. And you'll see that that OBJ file thing's not there. Yeah, that's just a little script I have built in with this uh editor to delete the old object file so I don't accidentally run my old stuff and wonder why my changes to the source code that might have a bug in them still run the same because it's running old object files okay anyway so here we go we have the basic thing we obviously have this defined mostly properly at least because it's not complaining and we're not even doing with it we're just exiting the process so what we can do now is one thing i'd recommended early on was to use the standard c programming library like a uh, libc or whatever you want to call it msvcrt whatever like for uh calling the basic stuff at the console and stuff like that and that's still a good thing to do but if you do you need to make sure for one thing we have it set for standard call if you do anything more than the simplest programs you need to put like c style calling for those types of calls but um I'm not going to do that, but what I wanted to do was show the right console method, which I don't remember if I showed it before, and if I did, I probably didn't show it in quite a streamlined way. So I was just going to show some people act like, oh, you know, right console is such a big deal. I really don't think it is. So right console, and it anything that you know is dealing with a string, you're going to have to either select ANSI or Unicode specifically, or you should. I don't recommend using the uh, the Unicode symbolic constant thing because it's just I've gone that route in the past and I just find it way better to be explicit okay so that's my preference you're welcome to do what you want but I definitely recommend this way and this is going to be a prototype and it is going to take 5d words one two three four five okay and then I happen to know that will need a standard output handle, so I can call this function. It's standard handle. That's going to be a. All these are prototypes, of course, and it only takes one D word, which is the type of uh, you want standard input, standard output, or standard error. So we want standard output. And so what we can do is come down here. And to show you, we can copy this into the clipboard, open up a web browser, and we can search online for it. I happen to have the, uh, if you watch the earlier videos, I have like various versions of the Windows API documentation. I could really easily just put right console, console in here. And then you can see right here's the, uh, basically the signature for what we need. So there's right console, it's going to return true or false, and uh, it takes a handle to the console, handle to the console screen buffer, pointer to the buffer to write from, which in other words is a string we want to write, and then uh, the number of characters to write, which is just the length of that string, a pointer to the number of characters written if we care, it's optional, and then some reserve thing that we don't care about for sure. So here's a better description of all these. You can see this is the Windows 32 programmer's reference. Pretty much applies for Windows 64-bit, virtually identically to. Um, and of course, we know this is dealing with strings, so we add the A or the W after that. And if we come down here, okay, we'll just stick with this for now. So in reverse order, since I'm using the push call style thing, we can just say, okay, these first two that we don't care about, they are going to be null pointers. So I'll come jump back over here, and I'll push two null pointers, just two zeros. And then if we jump back over there, we can see the next thing, because we're going in reverse order, we push back towards 
you know this handle that this parameter that's closest to this word needs to also be relatively closest to the uh, when we call right console ANSI so you know these two should be furthest away from it because they're the trailing if that makes sense and then we see right here number of characters to write so the number of characters to write is we're gonna push the length of um, string ANSI and we could have gotten away with using size of and I've seen a lot of people use that because size of will return the count of bytes in like a string or an array or whatever we don't want to do that because when especially once we get to words stuff like that we don't want to uh, count there'll be twice as many bytes as there are characters because they're 16 bits per element right so anyway that's why I'm avoiding size of but whatever it's not a big deal as you'll sh soon see because we won't even be able to use this for our particular method with the white stuff okay and then a pointer to the buffer to write from so that's going to be pretty similar push offset of string the address of effectively string ANSI and then finally we need that um, this handle to the console standard output thing so we'll go ahead and jump over here for that and this will be get a grand deal and if we were over here we could probably we could just hit group right here and then you'd see all these things so then there's git console of course they're not even gonna have it in there are they there it is standard handle and then you can see it just takes that one d word which is a number whatever and then right here the one we want is this standard output handle but of course all the old documentation doesn't tell you what the numeric value is so you either have to use some big bulky include file and include these uh, symbolic constants that are properly lined up with the proper value or you use the handy dandy Microsoft Online reference up here this place come here to get standard handle function pretty similar documentation but the cool thing is when you come down here to the parameters it actually tells you it's a D word negative 11 for that one right there so we're gonna push a negative 11 and that's effectively that so we'll put that there for a little note and then double check our um, I'll go back here back one more time and we can see we have one two three four five parameters and one two three four five parameters so then we should be good to call right console a and we should get this string just above the press here to continue prompt press any key to continue um, we're not getting it what am I doing wrong here probably have something backwards the offset of the string so we have handle string number handle string length and then the two nulls right console a and I for sure ran it in console mode what am I what am I missing here oh <laughs> I'm just pushing a negative 11 and calling right console that's my fault so what I need to do is separately call uh, we need to push that like that and then do a separate call to get standard handle of course I'm puttering out as we speak so I'm trying to get through it so we'll do that and then we'll call get standard handle and then whatever that returns will be an EAX so we'll just push that return value for that parameter now it should work okay this is a narrow string or this is a narrow ANSI ASCII string right here you can see that that's successfully printing that so we know we've done good we don't have any errors this would be the uh, from right here down the assembly and then that's that all right so now the fun part we need to this is the you know the 2000s where we use Unicode and we're not supposed to use ANSI but ANSI is always it's 
the good old way to to start out and get comfortable, get your feet wet with all this stuff, but then you want to bump it up to the Unicode, and of course that adds a little more complexity, but I feel like I've knocked out sort of a simple way to do this without necessarily relying on the MSM uh, 32 libs that were done by uh, like the Hutch guy, I guess, and um, maybe Exilion or whatever that other person's handle's name is. So they have some stuff that was kind of cool like 10 or 20 years ago, I guess, or more, but um, now it's like, I don't know. I just feel like we should know how to write our own macros, at least medium complexity ones. And also we don't want to be dependent on the MASM 32 stuff, you know? So this will apply even if you're uh, like I was insinuating is even if you're not using MASM 32 quote unquote dot coms package, um, you know, you're using like visual studio 2019 or whatever, this should still apply. Just make sure that you're com you're using ML, the 32 bit assembler, which most likely you are and not the ML 64 one. And it all should, go well and use your developer command prompt of course so that all your libraries and stuff are all found in the path but I won't be using any of the MASM32 ink files per se we'll be maybe making a really tiny one of our own here in a second alright so what we are going to need is write console w for wide strings Unicode, if you will, and it's going to be all the same thing. And this should all pretty much line up. And then what we need to do is we need a string that's wide instead of ANSI, and it's going to be a word instead of a byte. And we'll say this is a wide Unicode string. And then we'll give that a 13 comma 10 comma 0 also. What I do, I didn't use the single quote. Okay. Well, that would be all fine and dandy. And I'll just go ahead and go with that for now as if there's no problem here. And we'll see the problem. Which I think I did touch on in an earlier video. But we're going to expand upon it a little bit right here. Okay, hit F5. And here's where it starts assembling. And then we come down here and we can see on line 14, there's an error, constant value too large. And right here is line 14. And this constant value is what's too large because it's expecting literally one character. It wants us to go like this. It wants us to go that and then Like literally, it wants us to do all this junk. It's crazy. I don't even want to type out the whole string. It's like that annoying. And we'll just get it back somewhere around here. Then we have that, then we have the comma. So, that's a space so you can see each individual character has to be quoted and separated by commas like that now let's try it okay this is comma and that's what I have this is comma so anyway I think you get the picture so it's working to that effect like it has this is and then this little comma that's in between quotes and then it's got a carriage return because if we didn't have the carriage return there and I just put a zero there then it would say this is comma press any key to continue on the same line so I just you know put that stuff in there so it's on its own line like that all right so that's pretty tacky and the other option which is even worse is to just declare this as a byte right there and then you have to put a t comma zero h comma zero like each one has to have a zero following it, each character. And the reason is, is because the Intel systems are a, what's called the little Indian byte ordering. So it pushes the low byte first. So it will basically like go in and it will say, oh, it's going to, you know, declare a word or whatever to find a word. So it's going to push that low byte, that T into memory. And then it's going to push the zero, which is the high byte 
and that that's basically what all the uh the lower characters are the so-called lower characters the uh the otherwise the antsy ascii narrow characters the plain english if you will all that stuff effectively is just padded out with a bunch of zeros of eight zeros you know in front of it that's how you get the white characters so now you know that another way we can define this too is we can go like this and just say word and then do stuff like this and then I can even um, pit, leave some multiple characters on this line and come down here and do another word and then come down here and maybe even like take this last zero and put it on its line of its own and what's going on is this is all contiguous in memory so when we define this t effectively with you know all these characters or even with the commas between them with this old school string the old school masm when it was a commercial product they would you know give you some niceties like that and go through each character in that string and effectively put a comma in between it and then once we got into the Unicode days, when once that got more popular, as to my knowledge, Microsoft had stopped adding anything like that. They were starting to push more of the, you know, they C++ had been standardized and stuff, and they were staying on top of that. So they started providing like compiler intrinsics, I guess. I'm not exactly sure when they started supplying the intrinsics. I know Intel was doing it pretty early on, as far as I know. But anyway, um, so we're left with this weird that's just to kind of explain why it's kind of weird like this you know so you'd think like oh well maybe i could go and put this word t down here and declare this and then just have a nice long thing like that because these are all contiguous so it's going to keep going until it finds this zero that's excuse me <clears throat> that's the way the uh <clears throat> got a foggy throat going on okay that's the way that it works you know that just like right here it's just going through each character until it finds that zero at the end so if we were to try and run this it's going to complain and say syntax error string wide blah 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 and it's mad because it's not finding this first word on that first line there so if i just move it now this should work why doesn't it it says cannot open um let me try that one more time error real or bcd number is not allowed on line 19. line 19. oh i have these commas in the very i'm supposed to delete those <clears throat> excuse me okay so you can see now it says t press any key to continue right here but there's that t to make note of that okay it did find the first character there so what's going on there is down here this length of string wide it's coming up here and it's like oh that's it you know string wide it's one word because we didn't use that comma format so if i did the comma format and put the h on the first line with it then it find the th like it did right there right so that's kind of what's going on there it's that's just a little bit of funkiness a little bit of falling short by the assembler in my opinion so anyway that being said bring this one back down here what we're going for is if we can make a little macro that will effectively go through each pardon me why straighten this out for just a sec if it will go through each word in a string that we like if we provided a string in a more reasonable format like that can this macro go through and parse it out like this and paste it in for us but we can just do a pretty style you know wherever in our code and then this will go on at assembly time and we don't really have to see it or anything that's what we're going for i'll run it one more time to show you okay pressing key to continue all right let's count it it's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven i think we count the null there no actually we shouldn't have to count the null if we're providing it so I can just change this to a 10 and it should print the whole thing so this is comma there it is this is comma and then the new line and we didn't need the null because we were hard coding it we we're supplying it with the value so 
you know, if it used the null, we wouldn't have to do that. Which message box would use the null? We could come in here and do a, uh, we'll just do an invoke to keep it on one line and not make it look all ugly. Message box W, and that will be a null zero because it's not going to be assigned to a specific window. We'll do the offset of string wide and then we want to do that one more time for the title we'll just use the same exact string for the title otherwise it will say error it won't be an error but that's just what it defaults to okay and then let's try it out oh I've got to tell it that we want to use that and that's in um, That's going to be an MASM 32 lib user 32 dot lib. And then we'll declare it message box W and proto takes 40 words. I always do that. One, two, three, four. All right, save that and run it. What's the problem now? Missing operator and expression. Should have looked at what line it was on. 44. Line 44. I don't think I'm. Oh, it's invoke style, so I got to do that comma there. There we go. This is comma. And then we can see there it is on the console as well. Because I actually assembled it as a uh, a Windows program or excuse me, as a console program, so it got a console and a window. And just to show you on the command line, what I'm doing is um, I'm doing an ML, I'm using ML80 right here, and I'm doing ML forward slash C for assemble only, and then cough format, if you're using the older ones, you'll need to specify that. And then we're doing string prog dot asm all right and then we need to link it with subsystem console and then string oh, i got too many files string prog dot obj okay prog there it is. This is the da, 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 same thing, right? And if we uh, did it with a subsystem Windows, we wouldn't get the console output. We'd only get the window. So we have the window and then no console output. All right, so that's what's going on there behind the scenes, so you know. Okay, so we have a string and it's ugly. We have a wide string, it's working, right? We've been this far before, I think. So now let's do this macro. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call it WS and then it's instead of like proc like you might do if you're defining your own high level function, you do a macro and then we're going to take a variable name for the macro and we're going to take the string and then any of these last little trailing numbers or whatever. So we have the variable name, the string, and those numbers okay so they're going to be called args and that's a special thing called var args that you can do what did i do wrong there var i did something wrong there var a r g s var args singular okay and that's just the way that goes i don't know i don't think you have to use the word args there but every example i've seen always does and it has this does have to be on the last the last uh, parameter there and then these ones can optionally take like an req to say this is a required parameter which i'd recommend and optionally you could set a default value like something like that in between some brackets or whatever kind of like in python how you can do default values or whatever but uh this one we're just going to make it required as well and then we'll come in here and what we can do is we can echo our stuff so we can echo their name and uh, string 
And then when we're all done with our macro, we end it kind of like a closing bracket with end M for end macro, right? All right, and then what we want to do is we want to call it right here. So we're going to call it with some name, and then we're going to some string, some string, got lowercase. Oh, some string, and then we'll pass it like the uh, 13, 10, and zero. We could just pass it a zero, right? Most Windows stuff, you most of the time you'd probably get away with just the zero, but for good measure and for an example of having potentially more uh, numeric digits trailing at the end. And this macro, I'm going to keep it simple, so it's got to be this format. You can't pit numbers up here or anything fancy. It's just one, two, and then variable argument parameters. So it lines up with this one, two, variable args. All right, so now if we run it, it's probably just gonna echo var name and string instead of actually expanding these. So let's check it out. This is, of course, that's all that. So right here, some name, some string. So it did expand them, that's cool. But in a minute we'll see that that's not quite as cool as we want. I'm going to comment this out for now so we don't have to click OK on that box every single time for now. All right. But what we want to do following this little example we have down here, of, I'll space it down one so that it's a little more obvious. We're, we're trying to get it to mimic that, right? So with that some string that gets passed in, we want it to take that first character, we want it to print the, the var name, we want it to print word, and then we want to print the string inside of quotes. So echo right now is just a diagnostic thing. You usually would use it maybe at the for command line assemblies where you want to put like a diagnostic message or like a you are here type of a thing and during the pre-processing, but what we're doing is we're doing that for now so that we don't deal with a bunch of errors and not knowing what's going on in the background but after we get everything dialed we're going to go back and delete echo and just let that effect sort of paint itself into the source code without us really noticing it and then we'll just see the final effects okay so what we want to do is use the substring sub stir macro function. This is a predefined one that comes with MASM and you can check that out if we just type MASM um, at substr and there's one without the at sign in front of it and that's a macro procedure but we want to use it in a more compact format so why is it not showing us the windows? It's weird. It almost always recommends, I'm typing MASM doc. That should take us to the Microsoft Macro Assembler reference. Maybe that at sign through off the search engine. So in here we can just type sub, stir, and then you can see there's the one with and without the at. So we're going to use the one with the at. Take a minute for the page to load. A macro function that returns a substring starting at position. So this is a one based position. It's not zero based like you might be used to. Okay, and then it takes a string, it takes that starting position where you want the substring, and then an optional length. If you don't supply the length, it will just give you the rest of the string. So we'll go here and we'll say substring, and then we, thinking for a second, we don't want bare name, we don't want substring just yet, sorry, we want cat string so you know how substring works now I'm thinking a little backwards at the moment cat string with the at we go here this is going to concatenate strings macro function that concatenates one or more strings and there you can see cat string give it one or more strings pretty self-explanatory so we're going to cat string and the first one's going to be var name and the next one's going to be or we'll say var name and word we really i guess we could go var name word and then then we do finally 
we can nest in this little substring, if you want to call it that. Substring, and then it's going to take the string, and it's going to go, we're going to start at the second character because that first character is going to be a single quote, right? And we don't want that quote. But we want to be able to use quotes because they're handy dandy and like especially with source code editors, they like mine gets really weird if you leave a quote off. It kind of like does that to notify you and stuff. So it just looks really bad if we don't allow quotes in there. So we want to do a substring. We want to skip that quote and that will put us at the second character. Remember one based. And then we only need that one, that first letter, right? This first T right here, T. Well, let's just run that with this echo and see what we're getting right now. So you can see assembling, it's gonna be right under this, um, right under assembling string prog.asm. That's where we're gonna see that output that we care about for this echo stuff. So we can see cat string, it's not evaluating it because if it did, instead of seeing at cat string, we'd see the string that's supposed to be um, concatenated there. So I know what's going on with that. I just want to show you in case you run into that problem too. What you need to do, it's a little tricky, is you just put a percent sign. And that's the expansion character, if I have my terminology right. And in this particular instance with like echo and a very few others, you put it at the beginning of the line and it expands maybe not very few, but the very few that they use in examples, it expands all of this stuff. It tells it, process this stuff. Don't take it literally. If you can, try and convert it to a string. So now let's run it. And we can see up here that assembly start prog, and then right under it, this first error right here is on line 20, undefined symbol T. Okay, so now we're in the thick of it that I was kind of like, Trying to keep it simple and then start to show you what kind of problems could happen here. Okay, <laughs> for one thing, that T is not supposed to be there. That's supposed to be a 1. But coincidentally, we'll probably get a very similar error. So where's that assembly? And then we have some name words. So we need a, a space in between some name and words. So this is where we can use... I just happen to know all this stuff. There's the programmers the pro guide PDF you can read in that to find out more I think it's chapter 9 using macros so uh, if we go look at this sort of diamond like operator treats text as a single literal element so this is for when you want to use like spaces and commas and stuff like that that can throw off the uh, the whole deal here, you know, because if like if there's a comma in our string, it's going to interpret it like that, you know. It's a lot like the C macro preprocessing, but I'd argue even crazier. So what we can do here is we can wrap it in this, get rid of this comma since we know we want the var name, and then right after that we want a single space and then word, and that will be our first parameter. And then we know we want a space after word too, because down here space after word between that and the T, right? So I'm going to run it. You can see some name, word, and then S. So that's what I was saying, um, how we got that single character issue. I thought it was the T, but it was that one. But anyway, it's the S for some string. Wasn't using a T like I was looking down here thinking I was. So all we're getting is this S. And the reason is that's right here in this substring. So what we need to do is wrap this string in those same kind of brackets right there. Okay, let's try it out now. Some strings still only one word S, right? So here's the trick. If I have this right, I think what we need to do is put it in there. I know we need to eventually, but we're put it in the ampersands. And what the ampersands do is they tell it that, uh, let's punch those in here. I believe they should just be up here, not the runtime operator, since we're doing the pre-processing macros. So you see how parameters in between two ampersands? You really, you only have to have it on one side or the other, technically, but I think it's way better just to get in the habit of putting it on both sides like they're showing. Replaces parameter with its corresponding argument value. So what that does is MASM tries to take things like literally, and it has a bunch of variable ways of handling stuff. So this is saying, hey, 
treat this string like that string right there. Let's run it and see where we're at. We're still only getting the S. Gotta think for a minute. Why are we only getting that S? Oh, we're supposed to only be getting that S. Okay. So you know what? Those aren't even needed right now. So I'm gonna leave them out. What I meant to do, I'm sorry about that. I forgot what my focus was. We want to put a quote. We want to surround that S in quotes, just like this T is right here. So I'm going to do that literally, and then we'll run it. And we can see um, we're getting substring literal again, right? Instead of the S, because it's interpreting these quotes a little bit too literally, I guess you could say. But what we can do is just like how you can put the slash, the backslash, in, to escape a quote in a lot of other languages, you just put a bang or an exclamation point in front of those, and that will escape those right there. So then we'll get the same effect. And then we can see some name, word, S. All right, bam. Now we have it just like that. Here, open. So you can see that one looks just like that one, except, of course, the string's slightly different. It starts with an S instead of a T, right? But whatever. That's how we know we're dealing with different strings for the moment. Um, that looks good. So we're ready to move down to those next lines. So now we just need to obviously use some kind of loop if we can to do this because it's so similar and just jump right through each character. We're done with this first line special case thing. Okay. So I'm going to come down here and they have this handy dandy for each character. For character. Just like with all this other stuff, you can just punch it right in here. 4C. There it is. 4C. And it says, marks a block that will be repeated once for each character in a string with the current character replacing parameter on each repetition. So right there you can see you have 4C. There's It's, it's like basically four parameter in string. Run these statements and then close it off when you're done. So we'll do that. We'll say for character in string. Excuse me. Um, well, I'll just go ahead and, well, I want to kind of get through it. So you're welcome to, if you're following along closely, you can try different combinations of stuff. I spent most of the day trying to knock this out and just running into so many problems. But for each character in the string, we want to echo it and we want it in quotes chr like that actually i will leave this out like that for now and then we want to end macro and macro we want to echo it with the word word in front of it right <clears throat> excuse me okay i'm gonna run it and then we have word character and it's literally interpreting chr so that's where those uh ampersands come in handy so there we can see some, but it's ending right after some because there's a space in there. And you can also see it has that first quote and the S, which we don't want it to have. So we obviously need a substring here. So at substr. And these, uh, these are case sensitive. As far as I know, if we have this option case map none, which preserves the case, then that makes the... Uh, these particular predefined macro functions with the at sign in front of them, they should be case sensitive like that. So just so you know, don't run into problems on that. Um, substring string, we're gonna start at the third character because the first one's a quote, the second one's the S. We wanna start with that O. And then we're gonna go for our final one, which is size string. I think it's the final one. Size string. That size str, which of course gives us the size of a string. A macro function returns the length of the given string, returns as an integer right there. So that's one thing to note. If it's returning as a quote unquote integer in some macro function, we usually want it to be text unless we're going to do some sort of constant style math with that. Everything has to be able to be finished evaluating at assemble time as far as these macro functions go. Okay, so the string that we want to pass it is string. And then we want to subtract these same three that we're moving over because that's going to give us the full length of the string, right? So we only want to go starting inclusively with the third character, one base, third character. 
we're going to go all the way. That's effectively going to give us all the way to the end, except for the closing quote. It's going to leave that off, which works just fine for our purposes. So let's go ahead and run that, see where it's at. OK, it's not evaluating at substring and everything, but it still looks good up here on the top. But we need to get it to evaluate that. So if we remember this little percent sign, we can stick that in the front there and force it to evaluate all of these macro functions, all of the text macro stuff, it will force it to evaluate that it's not. So whenever you run into that problem, consider that expansion operator. All right, we're going to run it. So there we go. We got sum, and we got word. Everything's looking really good, except for it's not after that space, it's halting. So when we run into that problem, it could either be a case of needing to put these things out here to treat what's whatever the evaluated you know after it's done evaluating this it's going to replace that with that string which does have one space in it and that space will throw it off right so let's see if that does the trick there did the trick right we got all the way to the period so we got some all the way to the period we don't have the special characters yet no problem so that's the next part we do a uh, another four for loop but actually yeah for character wait I'm trying to think for arg in args oh yeah args I think we can get away with doing it just like that and then we want to echo that arg similar to the uh the four character loop if i have it right maybe i am supposed to use character i don't think so though okay we'll run that program error syntax error integer on 28 so we come down here to 28 well 28's down here where it's being evaluated but we know it's somewhere right in here right so what we need to do is we know we're passing this definitely integers without quotes they're coming in here as integers. So we know that, like I just said, not too long ago, was that um, we need to force some stuff to be text. So we'll wrap those. That's right, for a for loop, you're supposed to treat it like a list and wrap it in those angled brackets like that. So that's effectively gonna give us like a 13 comma 10 comma zero like that. So if we run it, we can see that works like that, right? We need to... Uh, Echo word. Yeah, so now down here we have it just like we want it. I don't know if I actually did that down here. Yeah, I did. Okay, cool. So it's just like that. But the thing is, we don't want it hard coded. We want it to be args so that we get that same effect. And we're going to hit F5. And there we go. Same effect, but now it's variable. So we could change it up and not have the 13 and the 10 or have other stuff if we wanted to. All right, so. We're there. If you run into any problems with more complex macros, you can just, of course, start slamming these kinds of things around stuff and, you know, pit wrapping it in those angled brackets like I did. All that good stuff. So that should be it. So now if we take this and cut it, cut it out of there and bring it down into our data section here, and we'll paste it in there. And we'll change this to string wide, change it to that name. We want it to effectively replace that ugly looking but properly working string wide. All right, I'm gonna save it and let's give it a smoke test. So it's all working, but we're getting an error because undefined symbol string wide, which makes sense. Cause like I said, we need to go back now that we're finished hashing out this function, we need to get rid of all these echoes and just let it paint that into the source code, so to speak. Just like that. And then I'm going to run it. And some string, press any key to continue. So it got cut off somewhere. Substring. So what happened right here is I think it got cut off in here. So we know that there's a space in there, so we need to wrap that like that. Let's try it out. Still same problem. So right here, 
maybe in one of these let's try uh probably all of these I think I did earlier still some string those hmm what was it Does it need to be, let's run it one more time. Some strand. So that's one, two, three. It's getting the space, but not the G. Not the period. And not the carriage returns. So we have cat string, var name, word with a space. String for C character. Or character arg args. Hmm. I did not run into this out of my ten zillion errors before. Wide string, some string. It's not calculating something right, is it? If it takes me more than a second to figure out, I will pause the video and come back. So I'll just go through and do I could put it back to echoes and stuff. Oh, you know what? I know exactly what it is. I'm gonna put all this back to exactly. I think I do. Let me check down here. Yeah. This push 10 right here. That's what the problem is. I had it hard coded. So don't make that mistake. Let's put it all back how it was. Of course, those things don't hurt. You could leave all of those characters in. And as a matter of fact, when I roughed this out, I did. I haven't been so sparse with this stuff before. So instead of pushing 10 there, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, comment this out. And we need to calculate that. So we'll do uh, push the offset of string wide which will effectively give us the address in memory of this first character right there and then we're going to call did I even include that file yet no okay so since that length of isn't going to work for uh whatever it's already deleted out of here but using the length of won't work it will just give us the length of that first character, right? So what we need to do is we need to call a special function and it's called uh, lsterlin. This lsterlin function. And this is the ANSI narrow one, but right now, of course, we're using the wide, so it always seems to recommend the wrong one to me. So you just come over here and like if I need ANSI, it will recommend wide and vice versa. Okay, lstrlen is basically string length function from Windows. I'm not using the C one. We already have the Windows libraries loaded. You know, it's like we're already platform dependent on them and all that good stuff. So we might as well just bring that that one in. So that's what I'm gonna do. So we're gonna do l s t r l e n, and then we want the wide one. And then that's a prototype, and it takes one D word, which is that address of the address of the long pointer to the string right there. And if we scroll down here, we can see that that's included in kernel 32 lib. And in a normal high level program, you just have to include windows.h or windows.inc or whatever. Okay, if you didn't want to have to hand type that prototype, big deal, right? So then we can come down here, we can call l sterlin and wide don't forget that part and then that will return a value in eax and then we can push that value onto the stack instead of this push 10 and then we'll get the actual length of the string we're dealing with and maybe it will work so we have some string right here fully written just like it should be so that's nice progress 
and that is a Unicode string. And we can come in here and add some characters to it to uh, verify that we're actually dealing with this string here. And you can see we added some smileys and a heart to it by just type in, you know, one, two, three. That's what happens at the console. If we were to do it in a message box, we get, we can unlock this message box again and run it. And then we can see it uses different special characters in there. Uh, and the console, even for the ANSI narrow strings, we'd still get those same ones using one, two, and three. It would still be those same characters, but in the Unicode mode and stuff, uh, we get, or the wide string mode, I guess I should say, we get a little bit different characters in the Windows message box. And this isn't dependent on the string. This uses that zero at the end. So I only brought that in for that right console, that string length thing. Okay, so that's working good. So the last little part I wanted to show about it, I think, is that we can cut this out. And we can just come up here and say, like, include a string thing dot ink. And then we can make a new file over here and just save it. File save as string thing dot ink and then now we effectively this is basically what those ink files a lot of what's going on behind the scenes save this one too is that it's just defining all this kind of stuff for you you know there is one of these macro functions called w str i think in masm32 it operates a little bit differently but similar effect simplifies the dealing with unicode strings but I wanted to show how you can make macro functions and uh, you know it's just a one-off so it's like well if you do that that will probably handle most of your wide strings and if you want to you could like make that a WS and uh, you know come over here make that a WS save them and then hit F5 and you can see it still works just like it did or you could even be more descriptive. That's supposed to stand for like wide string, right? Wide, as long as your name doesn't collide with anything else, we'll call it wide there and then call it wide here. See if maybe that's more readable and likable. So it's a little different, you know, it's not too crazy, but instead of doing the, uh, the name, the type, the string, and then, you know, that stuff, you do the type, the name, the string, and that stuff so it's just a little bit different ordering there and once again hit F5 it's all still working so you can see there's just to do a quick review over the rest of it that's the boilerplate this is including that string macro that we developed in file I prefer to, to develop as monolithically in a lot of programs most the vast majority of the time I program, I program monolithically like that. Then I don't have to worry like, oh, am I getting the include file name wrong or which include file was it? I'm minimizing complexity. I'm doing everything in place. And that way I know I've, I've narrowed down. Everything's right in front of my face of what's right or wrong for the most part. Not that you can't run into really difficult problems. Um, then we're doing our standard. This is just our includes for the functions, the Windows API functions from kernel 32 lib that we're using. And we're specifying, you know, ANSI or wide. And you can leave in if you're just thinking around like I am. If you want to go back and forth between right console A and right console W, you can define them both. And then you don't have to keep coming back up here and changing them. Same thing with length of string. That obviously has an A counterpart. And then this right here was for message box. User 32 is like the more visible stuff um, as far as windowing interface kind of stuff. So we needed to bring that in. And this is just a style I do where I do include lib and then I tab over and do it like that. You can do it however you want. Like I said, you can be more descriptive with your naming. You could actually bring in or create other include files that even if you didn't want to use D word for some reason, if you want to be more descriptive there. Um, then this is just standard data segment stuff. And we have our ANSI string that's a byte by byte string. And you know, here's the whole string. Single quotes don't matter. They're identical as far as I know to double quotes in MASM. Then we're followed by a carriage return, a line feed, and a null zero. 
the null zero only applies for like message box in this scenario it wouldn't apply for write console and the same thing for uh, the length of the string and the standard output handle and all that only apply you know this stuff is specific to itself and then this stuff is specific to itself all right and then of course our wide string and our new fancy format there with some extra characters so that's like if you wanted to do you don't have to do um like a unicode escape code thing if you don't want to you can just put a comma and do that i think you could you could smarten up this macro and make it so that you could do strings and commas and whatever i'll leave that as an exercise to the user maybe in a few weeks or a few months or whatever i might go back and have a fancier version and do a special little video on that and running through this one more time we have the name of our user created macro then we're defining it as a macro and then our first command line parameter it's required and then our second command line parameter that was the variable name of course the string that we're passing in it's required as well and then a var args that just grabs all the rest of that trailing stuff on the line then we're going to call the predefined macro function cat string which is going to concatenate the strings uh, starting with this would be effectively the first parameter there in between these literals which are kind of like meta quotes if you want to think of them like that because we obviously might want to do stuff with other quotes or what have you so that's what that does like if I wanted to force a space at the end of this right here I could go like this and then do a space and then do that and that would force the space there but it works without it so I like to keep the syntax pretty much as simple as possible so yeah do we have that it's bringing in ver name if we wanted to like f if for some reason you're having trouble with a particular thing like maybe you have a variable called var and a variable called name and one called v uh, ver name then you just wrap it like this and it would still run just as well we could go through as, as i do it i'll do that and then we'll hit play at the end and see it okay and then substring string i could literally force that in brackets if i needed to just like that that's probably a, especially when you're trying to hash stuff out maybe do it that way um yeah and that's the first parameter there and if you just in case you don't remember these uh, ampersands force this to be treated as a parameter as this parameter or as some kind of a variable and then these are kind of like uh kind of like quotes for the macro style stuff so that in case there's spaces or whatever that aren't getting interpreted properly substring starts the second character it's one based go for only one character and then that treats this quote as a literal um, it's escaped instead of being part of the macro logic or whatever we're just saying hey literally just you know treat that as like a the fourth parameter is that what it is one two three fourth parameter in there so just look at those commas to be able to tell the parameter count and then right here it's for each character as character from this substring that's made out of this string which I will put in these just to illustrate like I was saying oh starting at third character for reasons I've already explained earlier and like that and then that taking off those you know it's not zero based so by taking off the three characters off the length we're going to end up with all but the last character of the string and then down here we this forces it to expand these um to actually process these because this one's on the first the beginning of the you know the first non-space character of the line right so it just automatically does that it's not a parameter to something else so a lot of times when it is a parameter to another sort of a macro then you'll probably have to put that percent sign there to get it to kick in so if you end up with that and you're like freaking out then that's probably what it is so then we just get a substring in here and we've wrapped it in these uh those little literals the beginning and end to ensure that that you know those may be optional i don't remember if we absolutely needed them or not we're doing the word the character and we did need it in here because this is inside quotes and otherwise it was treating it it tries to treat everything as literal as possible it's trying to treat it as a literal chr in quotes so by putting the ampersands in there 
we said hey you know do it like that if we wanted to literally wrap it in ampersands we could probably get away with doing it like that you know so anyway I could be wrong there might be even more to it every time when something seems really simple when I'm off on my own doing it it turns out there's a bunch more to it but anyway we finish off with that we come down here and then for those trailing arguments right here we say for each uh, each in args we that was numbers so we made sure to include those literals and we can force it to be a parameter like that and we could even force this little one to be a parameter like that because it's this little parameter this we're inside another macro right here so this is a parameter into that macro all right and then we'll save this come back over here that looks good hit f5 hey what do you know it's still working just like it did even with all that extra cruft on there but like i said you know that isn't always necessary but sometimes it helps so that may be what you want to do so i think that pretty much explains all that we were just pushing the variables in reverse order we could say this is a right console w right so we could come up here and make this a little more readable if we wanted to and say uh, parameters for right console and then tab that over just like that make it pretty obvious what's going on there and if I wanted to, I could put all that up on one line if for some reason that was easier to see what's going on. So all that's effectively just pushing all these parameters just to call this at the end. And honestly, to me, this is, it's definitely more optimized, I feel like, than uh, the invoke, the high level syntax way of doing it because you're having to actually make these calls to these things. right here you're having to make these two calls so normally you would have to push those off onto the stack or some local variable or something like that which the stack is local variable right but you'd have to do some stuff like that which writing to memory is slow but right here you can see we're going directly from the register we're pushing it to the stack because that's what we have to do for this calling convention but we're doing it right away we're not like pushing it to the stack and then popping it around and you know doing all sorts of goofy stuff or whatever so anyway that is that that's how you get you know simplify this whole thing of dealing with wide strings effectively that's, and a taste of macros so thanks a lot for watching and if you have any questions or comments or whatever just leave them for me and I will probably notice them and answer them thanks again